Hey guys, in today's video I show you how I made this rustic trunk with a hidden compartment. I used some 1x4 pallet boards for the whole project. The first step was to make the front, back, and side panels. I cleaned up one end of the boards and using a stop block I cut them to their final length. I moved the stop block to 20 inches for the side panels. These are all four panels cut to length. Since I'm going to edge glue these boards together, I jointed each edge to remove any dirt or grime for a better surface. Next I apply the glue and clamp together each panel. I do the same thing for all panels in the trunk, which includes the top, bottom, and false bottom panels. This is the top panel. As you can tell, the majority of this project was gluing up these panels. After the glue dried, I cut each panel to their final size. For a parts list and detailed pictures, check out simplecove.com forward slash Sean. I will also include a link in the description below. Instead of using wood screws as the joinery method for the carcass, I'm going with inch and a half uh, cut nails. I wanted to give a shout out to Woodbridge Workshop on Instagram for giving me the idea of using these cut nails. To give the nails a more rustic look, I dipped them into some distilled vinegar and let them dry overnight. These are the decorative corner brackets that I'm using and they have this fresh black paint on them that doesn't look rustic. So what I'm gonna do is sand this off and dip it in some distilled vinegar to see how it looks. I just used 180 grit sandpaper in my sander to remove the paint. And just like with the nails, I dipped them in the vinegar and let them set overnight. It's been about 24 hours since I put the vinegar on these corner brackets. And these are the cut nails after 24 hours. To seal on the rust and to prevent any of it from wiping off, I sprayed a coat of polyurethane on them. These are the side panels and this is the bottom. And I'm gonna route a, uh, a 3 quarter inch rabbit along the bottom for the bottom panel to set in. So imagine this is the bottom panel. It's gonna set in the, uh, in the rabbit and I'm gonna use cut nails to hold it in. Since these boards aren't exactly three quarters of an inch and each board is different in thickness. I'm going to route the groove a little bit thicker, a little bit, I guess, wider than the three quarter inch boards that I have just to make sure because they're not exactly flat either. And I don't want anything sticking below the bottom of these panels. The front and back panels will have a stopped rabbet, whereas on the side panels, it's just all the way through. For this cut, I'm using a three quarter inch straight bit with a quarter inch shank and my trim router that has a quarter inch collet in it. This cut was about 3 eighths of an inch deep so I cut it in two passes lowering the bit each time. I'm now working on the front and back panels and I need to do a stopped groove right here, stopped rabbet, so that when you're looking at the trunk from the side you don't see this gap right here where the where the sides meet. So I'm going to line up the side panel here and this will tell me where I need to where I need to start my groove for the front and back so that it meets the groove that's on the side panels. So just make sure you line it up and ideally you want to use something other than a sharpie. So now when I start routing I'm going to 
not plunge in because it's not a plunge router. I'm just gonna push it in here and go all the way to the other side and stop. Next, I use my chisel to give me a square corner where the router bit is round, it leaves a round corner. When chiseling something like this, you want to be careful because this wood is cracked and very brittle. Just take a little piece off at a time. Now it's time to sand. I sanded all panels with 180 grit sandpaper. The purpose of sanding isn't to make the board smooth. You want to keep the rustic appearance but remove the dirt and grime from the boards. Everything has been sanded so I assembled the trunk using the cut nails. When using the cut nails, you want the head of the nail to be parallel with the grain to help prevent splitting and cracking, as you can see in this example. Earlier I mentioned that this trunk has a hidden compartment. This is that panel being glued up. I cut several 3 inch boards to install on the trunk for the false bottom to sit on. I nailed them into place using my brad nailer. One cool feature is this knot hole which is used to access the hidden compartment. For the finish I used a spar urethane from Minwax. I applied the urethane using a natural bristle brush. I applied a total of two coats without sanding in between. Now that the finish is dried, I'm going to go ahead and apply the corner brackets. I clamp the top down to the trunk to install the hinges. They are spaced 4 inches from the edge. These are the handles that I'm using for the side of the trunk to lift the, the trunk. They're made out of eight ounce vegetable tan cowhide leather. Uh, I dyed them a chocolate colored oil dye and then I applied uh, a thick coat of Carnauba cream protective wax finish. You can see how I dye these and how I apply the, the wax finish uh, looking at my last video, uh, the wooden stake and leather sheath. I attached the handles using screws in each side. Screws weren't my first choice, but I tried some cut tacks and they just didn't hold. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and dig the trunk. Hit the thumbs up button below and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel.